All right, what's up guys? We're out here in the desert. And we're gonna be checking some uh, deadfall traps that I've set up. Now, when I came into this area from the other direction initially, I saw a fly fly out from under here. So I knew that more than likely meant I had something. And you can see how I've got this set up. These branches from this Palo Verde kind of shade this area. This is in a dry creek bed. And it's kind of concealed. And there's this little like mini cave over there. And there's a lot of animal sign and footprints and things. So I knew this was an optimal place to set up these deadfalls. Okay, so we'll go in closer. All right, this is exactly how I found all of this. These branches I've just put here, again, to kind of conceal everything. You'll see right there what we've got. Oh, it's actually attached to the tree somehow. So there, flies are everywhere. There was the deadfall that it triggered. And there's where it ended up. And it looks like it's just a little, uh, I think it's an antelope squirrel. Not that there's much meat on those to begin with, but I set this up two days ago and I wasn't able to make it out here yesterday. And pretty well looks like this was from uh, that first night. So it's been here for a while. It's been in the shade the whole time, but it's been 60s, 70s during the day. So the flies have really got to it. Pretty tiny. And you can see a little bit of the blood. Definitely some blood down there. So we'll lift this up. Now, before we do that, this was the base rock. So this is what it got pinched under. And that rock didn't, these aren't square and not flat really, so it didn't fall perfect. It probably just hit and bounced off the side or fell crooked, but it was enough to pinch the squirrel. And uh, looks like it actually, especially the way the sticks are, it probably crawled its way out. Probably didn't get a clean smash and it probably had enough energy to crawl its way out because there is some, a lot of blood right there. So it, some internal hemorrhaging and it uh, unfortunately didn't die right away. But I mean, that's a heavy rock. They say to use three to four times the weight of the animal. That's not even a half pound animal. And that's about a, I don't even know, 10 pound rock. So it should have been more than enough. And I was just using this promontory peg I had a piece of uh, fishing line, but that ended up breaking while I was setting it. So the pig was originally set up right there. And the uh, rock was just kind of propped up on this part. I would actually set this smaller rock in this crack just in case it <clears throat> was back far enough. And there's blood on that, so I'm glad I put it there. I don't know if it mattered, but. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see that, that this does work. This poor little Mr. Squirrel. And um, here's another one that we did. You can see that. And this was a larger one. This is an extremely heavy rock and it had to be a very thick uh, promontory peg. And it's kind of on there, barely on there. And I was thinking that maybe a bigger game like a rabbit or even a coyote would come to retrieve this kill and then smell the other bait I had in there, stick its head in there and maybe crush it there. But that looks like that didn't happen. So that's probably why, because that thing is 
so heavy that it doesn't want to come off there. But we'll trigger it here. So that clearly, clearly works. But there's just so much weight on that peg, I, I would have been better off with a figure four. So that is actually the first time I've actually caught something in a primitive trap. It took me a while. It took me several sets to do this. And uh, I think it, the squirrel had been coming back every time getting a free meal. So I knew that eventually it was just a matter of time because it was, <clears throat> was already associating this area with food. So as long as I kept baiting it and gave it a really sensitive uh, trigger, it would work. When I set this one up, it collapsed on me probably about three times. But I would rather do that than it not be sensitive enough. And I use peanut butter and, and nuts and everything. And it looks like it got all the nuts, so it either triggered it at the very end when I was trying to lick up the last of the peanut butter or another squirrel came and ate the rest of it after this poor guy was dead. So that is uh, going to be pretty much it for this one. I wanted uh, to show finally a live field experiment of uh, these traps in motion prove that they do work. And I've got a lot of other uh, trapping videos on my channel. If you are interested in this kind of stuff, um, make sure to subscribe, like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching.